Hi everyone, in this video we're going to learn about writing chemical equations for reactions. So we're going to learn about writing molecular, complete ionic, and net ionic equations. All right, so let's go ahead and go over the definitions of each of the different types of equations. So molecular equations are equations that show all the compounds as neutral formulas instead of showing the soluble ones as ions. So notice that all of these reactants and products here are given in the form of a compound as neutral compounds. In complete ionic equations, we show the ions that are soluble as separated ions. So here, notice that NaCl up here was aqueous, so we broke it down into Na plus and Cl minus in solution. Same thing with AgNO3, we wrote it as Ag plus and NO3 minus. Also note that the ones that are polyatomic ions, they break up as units. And then on the product side, sodium nitrate was also aqueous, so we wrote it as ions. But silver chloride is a solid, which means that it's insoluble, and so we show it in the complete ionic equation as an unionized compound. So we show it as a neutral formula. In the net ionic equation, any species that is considered a spectator ion is left out of the equation. So in this reaction up here, notice that the sodium on both sides of the equation is the same. Same thing with the nitrate. It's nitrate on the left side, nitrate on the right side. So sodium and nitrate, because they did not change from the left to the right side of the equation, they are called spectator ions. So when we write the net ionic equation, we leave out the spectator ions. So the reactants in the net ionic equation are the two ions that form an insoluble product as a product. So it could either be, um, or basically not an aqueous product. So the product could either be solid, liquid, or gas, but it could not be aqueous. So let's go ahead and go over the rules for predicting the molecular equation, the complete ionic equation, and then that ionic equation for double displacement reactions. We first write the formula of the two reactants that are being mixed. So here, we're going to be mixing as a reactant lithium phosphate with calcium bromide, and both of these are aqueous. Next, what we do is we break up the aqueous compound into ions. So here, we wrote lithium plus with phosphate three minus, okay? Phosphate has a charge of three minus, lithium's plus one, calcium is two plus, and bromide is minus one. And then what we do is we form new products by basically switching these cations with each other. So here lithium was with phosphate, but on the product section, the lithium instead is going to take the place of the calcium and be with bromide. So we get lithium with bromide and the calcium with phosphate. Notice that the subscripts did not carry through the same way. So here we had lithium with a subscript of three, However, here, lithium does not have a subscript. So the new products that form are independent of the subscripts that were originally present on the reactant side. Next, what we do is we use the solubility rules to predict whether or not any of our products are insoluble. So we're gonna look up on the solubility chart to see if lithium bromide is aqueous or if calcium phosphate is aqueous. Next, we use the solubility rules to predict whether or not any of our products are soluble. So we can see from the solubility chart that lithium bromide is aqueous because here it says lithium or any compound containing lithium is soluble. Soluble means that it's aqueous. Calcium phosphate, on the other hand, we can see here that phosphate is insoluble and calcium is not one of the exceptions. So that would mean that it's a solid. So from the solubility chart, anything that is insoluble forms a solid product 
um, for the ion ionic compound. If all of the products are soluble, meaning aqueous, then there is no reaction. But if at least one product is either a solid, liquid, or gas, then there is a reaction. So in this example over here, in this chemical equation, notice that all of our reactants on products are aqueous, so there is no reaction here. Basically, no new substance is produced. And then the last thing we do is we balance coefficients. So notice here, for example, we have two phosphates. So I put a two here in front to balance the phosphates. That gives us six lithiums. So I put a six here to balance it. And then the three calciums, I put a three here to balance the calcium. And this equation is balanced. So this is our molecular equation. So from this molecular equation, we're going to write the complete ionic equation and the net ionic equation. For the complete ionic equation, we're going to break up all the soluble compounds into ions. So anything that was aqueous on top over here, right, these three compounds, we're going to break them up into the ions that they're made of. But the one that's a solid is going to remain as an unionized compound. And then for the net ionic equation, we're going to leave out the spectator ions. And the spectator ions are the ones that are the same on both sides of the equation. So the lithium and the bromide did not change from the reactant to the product side. So for the net ionic equation, we leave out those spectator ions. So our net ionic equation only includes the ions that formed, in this case, our solid. So now here is a practice problem for you to follow or do on your own. So go ahead and write the molecular equation, the complete ionic equation, and the net ionic equation for this reaction. Um, you can pause this video and then check your answer on the next slide. And here is the answer to the previous question.